On behalf of the Street Art Toronto team, I'd like to welcome everyone to this panel session today. And to start us off in a good way, I would like to offer this tobacco to Q Rockford. Q, with our request that you share a land rights acknowledgement with us to start our panel off in a good way. He was an Anishinaabe rapper, b-boy, and graffiti artist from Nipissing First Nation, and is currently based in Toronto. Q, as our panel session is taking place virtually, I offer this tobacco to you virtually today, and I very much look forward to giving it to you in person when next we meet. And I hope that soon. Miigwech. Miigwech. I accept that offering and arrangement. Um, I want to do this land acknowledgement, but first I have to follow a protocol. Um, that is what was taught to me of how I should acknowledge things. So first I need to acknowledge that um, I have to acknowledge all of our ancestors and our elders and say thank you for these teachings. And um, I'm going to begin the land acknowledgement, but first I'll speak it in my language very shortly. It's not going to be um, a traditional introduction. I'm going to do like a more modern one that I'm comfortable with saying. So as soon as I start speaking in my language, the land acknowledgement will begin. So Ani Anishinaabe, Manitouniman Anishinaabe. I'm from the Mayangan Dodum. I'm a member of Nipissing First Nation. Um, I, when I hear the word land acknowledgement, I've always been uh, mixed with emotion and feelings about what's being acknowledged, how, and under whose terms and reasons. Um, if I were to do a land acknowledgement, uh, I was taught to always acknowledge uh, the sacred four. So first thing I would like to acknowledge is the 13 grandmother clan system. That's the 13 moons, the full moons that we have every year here on Turtle Island. I also want to acknowledge the seven grandfather teachings, the four directions, and the air, the earth, the water, and the fire. Traditionally, the original um, treaty amongst nature here was between the plant nation, the insect nation, the birds nation, the fish nation, the animal nation, and last was the human nation. So now to the present time, we are living on Turtle Island, and it has been acknowledged that the Haudenosaunee and the Mississauga shared this territory. But that's a recent sharing, shared uh, agreement that they had. The Mississauga are Anishinaabe people. It's not two separate identities, they are the same. The Haudenosaunee are from the Six Nations, but originally the Six Nations is part of the Iroquois language umbrella. The Anishinaabe people are part of the Algonquin language umbrella. This is my land acknowledgement. Chemigwech. Thank you, Q. Toronto is home to some of the best street mural and graffiti artists in the world. And Street Art Toronto, an initiative of the City of Toronto Transportation Services Division, has had the pleasure of working with many of them over the years, including those who are represented on this panel session today. But all that skill and talent doesn't happen overnight. It takes years of practice and skills building and honing techniques through mentorship, knowledge sharing across communities and art styles, and skills building. In fact, we like to say at Street Art Toronto that the artwork is the end result of a set of values and processes that work together to create an opportunity for knowledge sharing across communities and, over time, a greater sense of belonging among all. So before we introduce our panel members, I'd like to welcome my START colleague, Catherine Campbell, to tell you a little more about START's career development ladder and how it contributes to the professional development of artists and the personal growth of street, mural, and graffiti artists over the course of their career. Catherine? Thank you, Carolyn. I'm honored to be here uh, on, this, uh, on this day and this call with all these very talented uh, and amazing artists. Uh, street art is comprised of a suite of internationally designed programs that offer canvases to artists that range in size of small scale traffic boxes and concrete barriers right up to large scale underpasses and 18 story high buildings. 
uh, to support artists as they work through their career development ladder. START offers training and skills building sessions like working at heights, uh, fall arrest, health and wellness art for uh, artist workshops, networking opportunities to foster an ecosystem of artists in Toronto who make or support the making of street art, mural and graffiti art. Artists attracted to engaging with START programs and projects are attracted to the values and themes of START uh, looks at to share through this public art. These include uh, themes of truth and reconciliation, diversity, equity and inclusion, the environment uh, and transportation uh, links like active transportation and walking and cycling and art making processes that really foster a greater sense of belonging among all. Thanks, Catherine. It's now my pleasure to introduce our panel facilitator for this afternoon, Anne-Marie Power. Anne-Marie has been a non-commercial cultural producer of street art for well over a decade, and she's been extremely instrumental in co-creating this afternoon's panel session and bringing it to you with us today. Anne-Marie? Thank you, Carolyn. And thank you, Catherine, Street Art Toronto and Toronto Outdoor Art Fair for the opportunity to gather here and listen to the stories of these wonderful artists. Um, I've had the pleasure of working with street and graffiti artists, as Catherine mentioned over, um, or rather Carolyn, over the last bulk of the past 10 years producing works in the public realm. And I feel very fortunate to be here today to help support uh, we'll begin our session with two keynote speakers, Alexander Bacon and Q Rock, and then we'll hear the artistic journeys of six artists, Karen Roberts, Leyland Adams, June June Kim, Malika Saida, Jeff Blackburn, and Margaret Cresswell. Uh, we'll first start with Alexander Bacon, an artist who began learning techniques on Toronto streets in the early 1990s and has now become internationally recognized for his signature graffiti style. Uh, Bacon, can you tell us about your artistic practice and experience within the Greek graffiti and street art communities? Uh, hi, Emily and everybody. Uh, thanks uh, for joining us and giving me the opportunity to speak here. Um, yeah, I mean, um, the opportunities and all the great things that have uh, presented themselves uh, while working with Street Art Toronto has been uh, amazing. I've been uh, meeting a lot of uh, incredible artists that I've got to work with and um, share this experience with. It's um, a learning process that doesn't stop and uh, it just keeps expanding and elevating as we keep moving forward. And, uh, oh, I'm going to keep talking. I, I wrote a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff down here because I, 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 I wasn't sure if you were going to ask me another question or, or whatever, but I'm going to keep going. I got a whole bunch of stuff to talk about. Um, so um, I started off as a graffiti artist on the streets here in Toronto. And, you know, I got a little bit older in life and I was like looking for kind of a career path and, and what to do. And I uh, got a call from... Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Mike Kennedy, um, who was working with Street Art Toronto. And he had a project uh, which was called the Seven Wonders Project. And this was in 2017. And um, so I said, sure, I'll, I'll work with you on this. And that's when I met um, everybody from Street Art Toronto and uh, got connected with the amazing program that they had uh, here in the city. And um, I, so I started working with them and they, they, they have um, training where they had me train for a lift and working at heights, which was incredible. But the, the real story with this is uh, how it's opened the door for me to start doing um, what I was good at, which was painting and making it a career for myself. So I, I just want to thank everybody at Street Art Toronto for all the amazing work that you guys do. And uh, as much as people see the artwork on the wall, it's the stuff that happens behind the scenes that's the real magic and takes the most amount of time. It might only take like three or four days to paint a mural, but it takes months of preparation 
and community work to make these things happen. So uh, when you see Carolyn Taylor and Anne Marie um, all, and uh, Kathleen and everybody else on, on Street Art Toronto, it's uh, really amazing what they do behind the scenes. Um, as for uh, some of the stuff that I, I wanted to talk about is, uh, is how art changes communities and how it unifies people and the messages that our artists are allowed to, to give visually. Um, I, I've seen incredible things happen. Most recently was the big um, Black Lives Matter um mural that happened in kensington market and that was really amazing and it just shows the power of art and how art can change communities and the way people think and uh, give people things to think about when they see a piece of art um i've worked with uh q um so I, another thing i wanted to touch on is that there's no real school for doing murals and this kind of artwork so it's one of those things that it is passed down from one person to another and mentoring and learning from other peoples is the only way and best way, I wouldn't say the only way, but it, it's, it is a really strong avenue to, to learn how to do what we do. Um, I've known Q for almost 20 years. We both come from a graffiti and b-boy background. Um, from years way back and I um, I got uh, he was always artistic and really good with a spray can and a good artist and um, you know we applied for a mural project together and this was uh, a few years back when we did the DuPont project and um, as you guys know he's uh, First Nations and um, we decided to do this like unifying mural where it was like my style mixed with his teachings and it'll go and the amount of learning that I did, even though I was his mentor on the painting end, he was also my teacher with his teachings on the wall. So the knowledge exchange that happens through this program is amazing and incredible. Um, and I think it's like the real magic behind the program because even though Q, I was mentoring Q, Q is, on his way now and has his entire own style and career ahead of him in the arts um, that he's doing. And that is all thanks to everybody here at Street Art Toronto that's made a bunch of dudes from the streets. Uh, we were just a bunch of grimy graffiti artists uh, able to take our art form, which sometimes is frowned upon by the general public and allow us to show people what we can do with, with spray paint um, and and do a, a, a wonderful piece of art for the community and for everybody to enjoy. So I, I just wanna say how important um, the knowledge exchange is on all levels um, with, with what we do here. And there's a lot of people that come from a graffiti background and then they get to a little older age or even not so much older, they just need to pay the bills and want to make a career and I just want to thank Street Art Toronto from the bottom of my heart for you know giving these opportunities to people like me Q Leland and you know Jeff comes from a graffiti background and everybody else so thank you very much um and I have some more stuff here that I wrote down because I knew my my brain was going to go places <laughs> while I'm on here um, but when it comes, I, I was always thinking, where's this going to lead? I'm not going to be able to paint forever, obviously. And um, I'm already 45 and some of my joints kind of hurt just from overuse of painting and stuff. And I think like at the end of the day, I'm probably going to really enjoy mentoring people, teaching people all, everything that I've ever learned in, on this journey and um, watching other people excel. Uh, I love showing people everything I know and um, I love learning from other people as well because as much as you know, there's always so much more to learn. And I think it's just a, a amazing um, seeing all the different styles and art that people are doing here in Toronto. Um, it is transcends race, gender, religion, 
all that kind of stuff because at the end of the day the only thing that matters is the beautiful colors on the wall and um, that people enjoy and i've met some amazing people throughout this journey and uh, i look forward to continuing doing this for a long time uh, ahead and i'm not sure how much time i have left on here but i'm gonna just keep going because i have so much more i could talk about um, I, I'm going to talk about some of the most recent projects I've worked on uh, with uh, Street Art Toronto. Um, I, like I mentioned before, me and Q worked on an underpass. Um, this was a few years ago, but we also got to do one last year at the Up Express uh, station at Lawrence and Western Road. And it was, um, it was amazing uh, because the to see how the community responded to us coming there and painting this, you know, boring gray surface in a neighborhood that probably doesn't get a lot of attention up there. And we went up there and we were playing our music while we were painting and the community was coming out and everybody was taking pictures and they were just asking all kinds of questions. And, you know, I, the way I've seen how art, transforms neighborhoods and places is amazing i i always tell people it's the best bang for your buck to change a neighborhood and uh and you know you you actually start seeing people you know come out and care and and the you know everybody's uh you know suddenly taking pictures in front of a wall it becomes a place where people want to hang out um so i think the arts are really important uh, for any community and it really really does uh, change the vibe of any kind of neighborhood um, in, in the city it's a it's healing and that's something that that Q's taught me is that the arts are healing and that you could use them as a message uh, to people and and give people that uh, through art and with Q's teachings on the wall, when he explains it, it's really amazing how many messages are in there and what people see in them and, and how everybody else interprets art in their own way, I think is really cool as well. So that's something I wanted to touch on. Um, and another thing I wanted to get, get at was um, just the, the direction that I think um, I'm going to be heading in with, with the new work that I'm going to be doing. I want to give a me good message out there to the people. Uh, all my art, well, most of my art, if you look at it, I try to do it for everybody to enjoy. Um, it's, uh, it has a lot of nature themes in it and, uh, and a lot of um, colors there to make people happy and where it can resonate with everybody in the community. Um, I just hope people, um, I, I, I just hope people like what we're doing and I, I hope that, you know, some young artists out there can look at, at us and say, hey, I want to do that and maybe they'll follow in, you know, one of our footsteps and just get out there and, and do it. And I think that's going to be uh, something that Street Art Toronto is going to be working on because they they've given me a platform to do what I do and I'm going on to doing huge I, I started just doing these little projects and now I'm doing these like massive walls and uh, I think it's just really amazing uh, what how far I've come and I think one of the great things is like it's almost challenging I think with Street Art Toronto it's just say they I got the swing stage training last year and I'm afraid of heights, you know, and I still went and I did it. And now I'm like looking at big walls and seeing, you know, how I can tackle them. And it was just something I would have never done before. And so I, I, I think it's really cool. And I'm just going to keep pushing forward and seeing how things go with that. And, uh, but I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I, and, and, you know, I just want to say the people that you meet in the arts are incredible. Uh, I've met so many people uh, in Toronto. It doesn't matter what level of artist you are or whatever. Everybody is doing their own thing and it's always a positive message. And so the people in the community here are really incredible. And 
I would say Toronto itself as a city is really um, is really making a really what's the word for it? I don't know. It's a real presence, a real presence with uh, with the arts, and uh, it's gonna it's becoming a city that is well known for for its street art and its murals. Like I, I I drive around sometimes and I see walls that I didn't even know and like little laneways and everything's colored in paint and I just think it's incredible uh, for all the work uh, that, that's gone out there and I give all the props to the artists uh, that are doing everything here in Toronto um, and the, like I said the, the, the people I've met is just absolutely incredible and watching them flourish and, and seeing their artwork um, is what really strives uh, gets me up in the morning and uh, I really enjoy it so I just want to thank everybody for everything here. Awesome. Thank you so much, Bacon. I appreciate you sharing all of the, um, those stories of your journey and also for being one of the leading graffiti artists in this country and all your contr contributions to this city to make it such an amazing space to look at and to travel through. Um, you mentioned community um, in terms of creating community uh, and working together with uh, Q Rock over the last few years and your friendship over the past decade or plus. Um, just going to use that as a connector. Uh, we have learned from Q um, many teachings, many traditional teachings, and in addition um, to him being a b-boy, graffiti artist, MC, uh, hailing from Nipissing First Nation, he's also this wonderful teacher. And as a segue over to Q um, and to introduce him, uh, in your bio, Q, uh, it's mentioned that your mentors encouraged you to be creative and not let anything go to waste with what you share in art. Could you tell us how you embrace that in your artistic practice within your approach to murals and graffiti? Um, I was always trying to focusing on a reason for what's behind like the purpose of what I'm doing. So um, a lot of the, like, the styles that I'm heavily influenced from is my Anishinaabe culture and then hip hop. So I've learned how to like combine the two together uh, using spray cans in, basically in aerosol paint or you know just basically hip hop's approach uh, to communicate in Western culture. So if there's four art forms in hip hop and I choose graffiti as one of them um, amongst the others. But specifically right now, like when I do the art that I'm doing, it's um, I'm trying to be original, but I'm also trying to stick to the teachings and geometry that was taught to me um, from my mom, my grandmother, my family, my father, everyone in my family um, <clears throat> has a uh, has an art art like an art background. I guess like it's just part of our lifestyle. Like uh, when I first started going to school, I started hearing stuff like art class and started looking at what people were doing and. Those are things that we have been doing, like I've all, I grew up doing. I've always was encouraged to somehow uh, relay a message. And usually it's the teachings that were already given to us. Like we try to share those teachings and our understanding or our interpretation of what we're seeing and hearing, feeling. And uh, I try to incorporate it all into the paintings that I do. Um, yeah. Uh, so, um, a bit about my background, uh, I am a hip hop artist, but my original, like, I guess, like inspiration, it all came from my culture. Um, so my mom, my father are both uh, traditional healers and uh, my mom's um, very much involved in our community, both uh, in the urban environment and in the reservation environment. Um, so growing up, I was um, just, you know, around her and hugely inspired from her. My father, um, similar uh, approaches with the community, except for he worked in the prison system. And um, so I was always taught to be an activist, always taught to be a rebel of society. 
and uh, how I would, you know, be able to contribute to society was through my culture. Hip hop was the only art forms that I could use that really allowed me to break the ice in Western culture. And then I could get people's attention through hip hop. And that's what I, the mediums that I choose to use. Um, uh, so I'm a grass dancer. Um, I'm a fire keeper. Um, I'm a storyteller. And uh, I'm a father. I have a son and a daughter. And uh, that's been huge on my lifestyle choices and direction that I had. Uh, I didn't always think I was going to be a painter. Like I didn't think um, this would ever be a career choice. That's for sure. But when I, um, when I put that energy out there, Alex uh, was listening to me and he basically like, I guess when he caught an opportunity, he approached me and was like, yo, I have an opportunity where we can do this. Cause I've been asking Alex to mentor me since 1999. <laughs> so, uh, it was, I, did, I jumped on that opportunity really fast. Um, my hip hop background is heavily influenced from New York. I spent a lot of time living in New York City, specifically in the Bronx, and really learning this culture, like how I would try to learn my culture from my ancestors, my elders. I took the opportunity to go to New York to talk to the pioneers, the people that invented this or created this culture, and learn what their, you know, what how learn as much as I could, absorb as much as I could about hip hop. Um, so my history with baking, like I said, it goes back to 1999. Um, I moved to Toronto and uh, I haven't really, um, I've been here ever since. Like I've, I've gone other places, but like Toronto has been my home. Since I've been in Toronto, I've had a career as being a hip hop artist. And several years ago, Alex approached me about the mural situation where I could be involved with him and he could mentor me finally. And, um, and we can both get paid from the situation. So when he uh, offered that to me, I, like I said, I jumped on it. We did the DuPont uh, mural, which was my first mural. And um, I literally transformed overnight. And each time I spent um, you know, practicing my art forms, I felt like a huge difference in my approaches just by being around Alex gave me a confidence about um, what I was doing and how I was doing it and making sure he also gave me the skills like the techniques that I needed to get my message across in the way I wanted to present it you know I take pride in like detail and especially the small details and he was able to really help me with that so I can't thank him enough he knows that every time we talk you know what's up um, I love the guy he's an amazing person um, so besides that, uh, street art has been the hugest, uh, I guess, impact in a positive way as a career choice than anything I've ever, institution, any other groups that I've ever worked with. Um, it's crazy how fast things have catapulted for me because I literally can just think back a few murals ago and it feels like a very short timeline. I know it's been like three years now, but from DuPont until um, two weekends ago. Everything has been a really fast paced, uh, trajected like catapult in my career. Um, I've learned how to be professional. My network has grown like insane. And um, it's amazing how being around people that are your, you know, even if you're not sharing the same styles, just being around other artists, they pick up a lot of things and, um, through those learned behaviors, like I've even people now take me more serious as an artist. And um, yeah, that's been a huge part of the platform that Street Art Toronto has created for me. There's a lot of opportunities that I would never go to, like things that I would never involve myself in. And um, you know, when you're working with uh, an outside group, like one thing I really learned that was valuable was I had to open my mind a lot more than what I was used to. I was used to protect, protecting a lot of things. And um, the people that I work with, the Street Art Toronto, actually have my trust. So I feel really com comfortable sharing with them and being able to be an, an Anishinaabe artist and be pure about it, not trying to compromise, not trying to, you know, there's, there's an integrity that I have to keep. And they make it really easy for me to, like, express that. There's no conf conflict. There's no, um, it's always a very supportive uh, role. And um, it's, I, I got... I don't know, I just, uh, you know, it's really, for me, like, 
I'm from a background in hip hop where everything is earned and it's earned in a very long period of time. So like I could be hanging out with somebody, one of my mentors since I was eight years old. And by the time I'm 30, he'll be like, okay, now you're dope. And it's a tough love situation. And like, that's the way I was brought up in, in art forms. But with street art, it's a nurturing thing where they're like, taking you and they're like which direction do you want to go and then it's like you don't really even get a chance to like take it all in digest everything in because the way that everyone's working and how they work together it's like um it's inspiring so i'm looking forward to my future with street art toronto and everyone that's in street art toronto and i hope to meet some new people and i hope to continue to share and um yeah i'm extremely grateful and very grat uh deeply thankful to be here. And uh, I think that's about it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Q. That was uh, a wonder syno wonderful synopsis of your most recent years working with Street Art Toronto, putting uh, your artwork on the streets and you know sharing your teachings uh, with everyone out here that um, hail from your, your parents and your family of healers. We appreciate that. Um, in the spirit of knowledge sharing and mentorship, I'm going to move on to the next uh, speaker. Her name is Karen Roberts, who is a visual artist and a photographer who recently took her work outdoors. Um, Karen, I understand that you too recently finished an apprenticeship uh, with Bacon for a Frontline Heroes mural. Could you tell us a little bit about how that opportunity came about? Um, okay, so I haven't finished it. I'm just starting the mentorship with Bacon. And um, I also got a Frontline Heroes mural, which hopefully when, we, when I start actually working on it, I, Bacon will be able to help me with that. Um, I watched him create his Frontline Heroes mural. Um, so the, the, the mentorship came about, um, I, I've been watching Bacon's work for a couple of years and it's always been like jaw dropping every time he does a new piece. <laughs> and it's like, I really wish I could do some of what he's doing. So his, 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 um, his skill is incredible. Uh, but his style speaks to me too, because there's a couple elements that I really want to bring into my work. Um, which, you know, he, he mixes realism and abstraction and uh, graffiti and writing and a lot of his work has movement in it. And that's the thing that I really want to bring into my work because um, I also have a history with dance and I shoot a lot of dancers and photograph a lot of dancers. And I, I, I started painting them originally from photographs and I'd end up with two images that almost look the same. And it's like, well, I don't need two photographs. I want something different. So I'm trying to push myself out of, beyond my comfort zone, put it that way, and, and uh, get away from complete realism and have more of the emotion come through. And um, learning how to use a spray can the way Bacon can use a spray can is really gonna help me get that done. Um, so, so far, uh, you know, I've gone and watched him set up his mural and, and transfer to the wall. I watched him do some painting on uh, another project that he was working on. And we're, uh, we're about to arrange what more we can do coming next, right? So uh, my Frontline Heroes mural, uh, which hopefully will be done in July, uh, I'm going to have him come and help me with that and give me some tips. Um, and he's, he's been very helpful uh, already. So. Uh, when I first asked him if he would do it, he was kindly accepted and everything. That was great. And not long after, I, I put my application in for a mentorship. Not long after, I met Q Rock at a street art function. And he told me how he had just had a mentorship with Bacon. And he couldn't say enough good things about him. So right then, it was like, oh, yeah, I picked the right person. <laughs> you know. So, and then I talked to Jason from Street Art, and he also said Bacon is fantastic. He's wonderful. He's a really nice guy. He's very helpful. I thought, great. <laughs> so I was really thrilled when I got this Canada Council grant to do mentorship with him. Um, so that's just starting now. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to learning half of what he knows. 
<laughs> so that would be awesome. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of what uh, what else. Um, how did you take your practice to the street? What what inspired you to do so? Uh, my first attempt at street art was um, with Street Art Toronto. I did an outside the box um, mural. And at that time, I also went and did, uh, just that after I applied, I got, I went to the mural roots. They have a mural introduction to mural arts program. So I did that, which helped give me a lot of background, fill in a lot of gaps of things that you don't always know. Um, so that helped me, you know, prepare for the next calls that I saw. So from there I did, you know, I did the outside the box, I did bell boxes. Um, I worked on some BIA murals and uh, I did a, um, a very long road mural for the city of Toronto for the King Street pilot program. And uh, Marg helped me on that one. And, um, and from there, I've done a couple of uh, like private commissions on a greenhouse and things like that. Um, and I, I really like, having my work out into the public because people can actually see it enjoy it you know like even when you paint a, a a beautiful painting and and you sell it or whatever um you know there's a limited amount of people that actually see it right the owner some family some friends you know maybe in an office but on the street many many people see it so um the picture you see right now is a painting that i i was experimenting with um earlier in the year i pushing myself to combine spray painting and acrylic painting and some photographs um, of, of dancers. And uh, so I, I was playing around and everything and, and uh, I was liking where it was going, but then I realized, well, for me, I, I put his body, the, the dancer's body too obvious. Uh, so I took it back outside, spray painted it all over again. And then I made him much more subtle because I wanted to be, looking like he's just sort of become the airflow and the wind and the, the movement and not just you know a man in a room or a man in the wind so um i want to do more like this and i think it with more skill with a spray can it's going to be a lot easier for me or quicker hopefully <laughs> than you know so much going back and forth back and forth back and forth and correcting so um and this other picture again is where i'm forcing myself to paint a little bit more abstracted than what I'm used to doing. So I find when I'm, I start something like this, uh, I start off abstract and then I get more and more detail focused and I start putting in things that it was like, yeah, I don't want to do that. And I really have to pull back. So um, these are things that I think would transfer really nicely to large murals as well on walls. So um, that's my goal is to learn that. So, um, Hopefully with the apprentice, I'll pick up some of these skills and I'd, I, I'd really like to get um, lift training this year. I hope it's possible, you know, with the pandemic, some things are harder than normal. Uh, so then I can do maybe two and three story murals. That would be awesome because I have about a hundred thousand photographs of dancers. <laughs> that a, a few of them would make really nice murals. <laughs> um, so, Let's see, what else? <laughs> That's, um, thank you so much, Karen. I appreciate you sharing. And those pieces with the aerosol and also, you know, marrying your experience of photographing dancers, it, it makes for such a powerful piece. Oh, and, uh, you know, thank you so much for putting more arts out into the world because we need it more than ever in terms of healing and dealing with all the craziness that's happening in our world right now. Absolutely. Turn our attention to our next speaker, Leyland Adams. Uh, Leyland is actually coming from a project site. Leyland, I met you a few years ago under a bridge by a river on a VR project. And um, most recently, I see that you've been involved with one of the largest murals in Scarborough on the Susan Street mural. 
can you tell us a little bit about your journey? Uh, yeah, so I've been doing murals for about 14 years now. And uh, I don't know, I started off just doing graffiti. I had a friend who was into that, gave me a can of spray paint, and it was like the, the skies parted. And I was like, I don't know what this is, but I really like this. And from there, I kind of like took that, I don't know, I realized that uh, graffiti art and just art in general, I could, I could translate that into a career, kind of like what Bacon was saying, where someone passed it down to me, and then I saw the opportunity there. I was like, maybe this could be something more. And then I went to school and then I got out to the real world and started just working with other artists. And um, specifically with Street Art Toronto, I, I think I started, um, I, I was mentored with a friend, uh, Damir. He's one of the, the ones who I did the, uh, the large scale mural with. But I had done a bunch of smaller projects with him, working with the community and just kind of learning what it takes to build a project and, and work with communities to make art that they want to see in their communities. And it's been, it's been a wild journey from doing really small things like, like these bike fairs right now to doing 14 stories. Uh, it's, it's really humbling, to be honest, because this is not where I thought I would be, but it's where I, would, I hoped I would be. And uh, I don't know, it's been, it's been a wild journey. That's awesome. Um, how did you first find out about the Street Art Toronto Project and get involved? So the first thing that I really had heard about was a lot like Bacon was a friend, uh, Michael Kennedy. He, uh, he had done this project, the Seven Wonders Project, and I saw a whole bunch of my friends on there and just all these amazing artists collaborating and working together. And I thought, I don't know, again, I don't know what this is, but there's something there. And I, I, I just kind of, I was like, I, I got to find out what's, what's going on with this. And then I took the Mural Roots, their mural program, their the career development program. And from there, I, I had already been doing murals for a while, but I had never really worked with street art in any real capacity other than just small laneway things. And, uh, and I met Carolyn. And then from there, I was just like, hey, how do I, like I saw all these, I thought all my friends running projects and doing these really amazing things. And I was like, hey, I'm, I'm in from the east end of Scarborough. And I know that everyone does all these projects downtown and in the west end, but like, there's nothing in Scarborough. Like, how do I, how do I get involved? And from there, she just kind of, I don't know, she, she, yeah, she just helped me. She helped me kind of connect the dots and show me opportunities that I, I, I never had before. And that really was my, my foot in the door. I think I was put on to this, yeah, to these bike fairs, one of my first real projects with Street Art Toronto. And it was just on a whim. She was just like, hey, get involved with this thing. And then from there, I was like, this is amazing. They're gonna pay me to do what I love. And I get to work with awesome artists and collaborate. And I help my community at the same time. I was like, how, like, how is this possible, you know? And, and from there, it's just kind of been a great relationship ever since. Awesome. Uh, question for you. You mentioned that there is a bit of a desert in terms of murals in Scarborough. Do you have any um, plans to put up more work in, in the East End? Uh, definitely. Um, so with my, my buddy Amir, me and him have been, he's been working in Scarborough in the East End, doing programming with youth and creating murals for like, I think like seven years now. And there's just, there's such a want for it and such a need. And we've just been kind of doing smaller things with uh, Toronto Community Housing, trying to get like just workshops with kids and teaching them that this skill that they're, that they're learning, they're picking up, they can take them somewhere. That it's not just, you're not just painting for fun. Even though it is fun, it's great. You can still you can turn that into a career and so i'm hoping to try and do more just keep with the community building and like really helping my neighborhood even though i don't live there anymore it's still it's where my heart's at it's where i want to see more and more growth and development so i'm hoping to just keep this momentum and and hopefully when all this COVID things done we can just start doing more youth work and like bringing more color to such an already colorful neighborhood i love it and so Question for you, you are on a project site right now. What, I am on a project site right now. What, yeah. what are you doing? What's, what's your role there? Uh, so I'm, I'm site supervising. And uh, so there's, so we're doing the bike barrier project and it's right up near Yorkdale, Wilson Yard in this, this parking lot of, a, of an area just off yeah. the island. And uh, there's some, we have, I think 140 barriers that are being painted by different artists and right now, 
it's for me it's mostly i've been just like making sure the artists are okay making sure there's water tents um just seeing that they have everything they need and just making sure the place doesn't burn down that's kind of <laughs> what i've been doing but um yeah it's, it's been really nice to just like see all these different artists come together and just there's like a, there's a shared theme but everything just feels very fresh and different you can see how people can take the same project and really spin it on its head and it's been nice to just help facilitate and supervise that it's been such like a gift a treat awesome um well it's it's interesting because i feel the street art toronto projects have this nice organic flow which contributes to this mass of amazing artwork and I'm really grateful for um, all the artists in this panel as well as um, you know all the artwork that you've contributed Leyland and your project lead positions um, doing these uh, you know uh, projects and in terms of a project lead um, we are going to move on to our next panel uh, member who's Jun Jun Kim and over most recent years she been leading uh, individual projects for Street Art Toronto. Uh, she is a um, muralist, a painter, and also produces organic prints, illustrations, and ceramics. Uh, June, I understand uh, that your work encompasses both a love for the natural environment as well as for Korean folk art. Could you? Um, Tell us how you began to practice, uh, or sorry, to transfer your artistic practice to the public realm. So yeah, I grew up in Korea and I had a former training in fine art. So like, I was so used to seeing artwork inside of the galleries and just so used to like paintings hanging on the walls. And then I moved to Canada and I saw, when I saw all the mirrors, beautiful mirrors, all the city, it just blew my mind. And that's the moment that I knew I wanted to do something like that and expand my studio work and do something outside of the studio. Um, I guess that's how I first started to doing mirrors. Um, just to share us on my journey with uh, Stuart Art, um, when I first figured out that the mirror is the one that I really wanted to do, I searched a lot of them, a lot of examples. I saw, searched all the organization and then I found about Share Toronto and also Mirror Roots, which brought up a couple of times before. Um, mirror Roots is also another organization who supports mirror artists. So I took one of their courses and after that, everything kind of expanded. I started seeing all the opportunities and I apply a lot of opportunities for the mirror, uh, making mirror arts. And I don't know, like things got released to one, to one another. And I also formed uh, the artist collective called KJ Bit with my friend Erica James. And we start producing our own street, street art events. Um, let me show you some of my examples of what I did with Stuart Toronto. So yeah, this is the very first mirror that I painted. It's a part of the project called Woman Paint in 2017. So this is like like very first mirror that I ever done. Uh, it's a really beautiful laneway project with all the women artists gathered together and like paint in like two, three days. It was so beautiful. This one is, um, we got support, material support from Stuart Toronto. Um, it's, um, I collaborate with graffiti artist Poser. We collaborated on the design and we paint together. And I also learned a lot from him too. I didn't know much about spray painting, but he taught me a lot. And this is the laneway project we did. I only show uh, just one example of my work, but actually it's a whole laneway covered with beautiful arts. We hired um, more than 40 artists 
to paint the garage door and it was so beautiful it, it was so well received and we want to continue to do this and give more opportunities to um, young emerging artists too and this is one of the very famous Sierra Toronto program outside the box and I just wanted to show you this because I recently started painting mirrors with my um, Korean background. It's a tiger painting. Uh, in Korean, it's called Horangi. Horangi is the, like people uh, hang a lot of tiger painting at their home in Korea because they believe that tiger will, um, will protect them from disasters. And I thought they would be really perfect subject to paint. Um, these days because we are suffering a lot from different stuff. So we want to, we want to get together, get through this together. And I really appreciate the opportunity for the uh, Toronto Outdoor Art Fair to show my studio works. And you can find me there. This is my name and my Instagram handle. Thank you so much, June. Your work is so vibrant and uplifting, and I love you. it around in Toronto. It's such a wonderful addition. Um, now, another um, panelist joining us today is her name is Malika Saida, who has a wonderful background as an illustrator of over 30 children's books. Uh, she's part of an award-winning animated studio, and she's got a really interesting story. Malika, would you be able to tell us how painting in the public realm sparked your interest? Um, yeah, like, like Dion, I started my uh, art journey from back home. Uh, I got a degree in uh, painting and then visual communication, but uh, I can say before 2016, I had uh, I never done um, a proper mural painting. Um, we had mural course at uh, university about the history of wall painting and various techniques. Uh, I also painted on the wall of a school in the summer for two days when I was in high school. And the third day I went to the hospital because I was dehydrated <laughs> the summer heat was unreal. Um, in 2016, the Tehran municipality um, called on individual artists to send their proposal for a mural. Uh, their idea was to decorate the school walls, mostly schools in poor areas. Um, and the reopening uh, for the um, reopening season of um, schools. Uh, my plan was selected about 100, school, um, 100 schools and 100 artists they selected. Um, in the orientation meeting, they mentioned that training will be provided for those artists that, um, uh, who are interested to take full responsibility to execute their mural. Um, so, I was extremely excited about what I was about to start and accept that all of the condition uh, that they provided. Um, first, I had to adjust my design to fit the size um, of the project um, with the help of a mentor. And there I realized that my wall was about 6,000 square feet, <laughs> a huge horizontal wall. Uh, so, after adjusting the design, my mentor said, uh, so this is a washer pressure company contact number, and this is, a, um, this is a number of someone who can help you to repair those part of the wall that is broken because you need to fix it before you start painting. And then he said, I will also come once every few days and check the progress of the work, uh, but the rest is up to you. And uh, he also said, uh, try to finish it in one month because we want to, this project, get it finished before uh, a school opens. Oh, yeah, that, that's when I freaked out a bit. <laughs> it was both 
interesting and uh, scary for me both at the same time because until then I had never spoken uh, to a construction worker or had no clue what the washer pressure guide uh, was going to do. Uh, that was definitely a good experience and uh, a good start for me because um, I learned a lot about how to prepare a wall, about uh, transferring and scaling idea into the wall. Also, I learned, um, I hired some of my close friends to help me and something else I learned is uh, do not hire your close friend. <laughs> Uh, you will talk more than you, uh, more than they work. Um, yeah, if I were to refer to a challenge I had uh, in that project, I um, it was when I finished preparing the wall and uh, primer was applying and the background uh, was painted, which took two weeks to do. Uh, in the middle of third week, a lady who was a principal of the school, she came and asked me, what are you doing here? I explained that uh, about the project, but she mentioned she doesn't like the, uh, and she doesn't like painting on her school's wall. Uh, and it's against her belief and the, the, the school policy. And I, then I found out that there is a very religious school there. And for that reason, my project had to be stopped. The wall didn't belong to them, but the municipality did, did, did not want to get into an argument with them. So I was left with everything I had done and had to stop whatever I planned to do. Um, so I decided to go and talk with them, with the school principals. Um, although, I disagreed with their belief and idea, but I had to respect their ideology and I had aimed to finish the project and I knew that I would always face uh, this obstacle and uh, have to have my head and hope high. So um, I finally could convince them, although I deleted some, a few pictures and changed some part of my design to be sacrificed for the idea of its project was able to be finished. Uh, a few months after I moved to um, Toronto, I don't know, I have time <laughs> to talk about, yeah. Uh, yeah, after I came to Canada, um, I was able to receive a grant from Toronto Arts Council. I've, um, um, Nick Sweetman was uh, my mentor for one year. Um, he helped me to uh, get acquainted with mural roots and street art Toronto. And I was able to apply for a new murals project throughout the last couple of years, but none so far has been as big as what I did in Tehran yet. <laughs> That is quite the experience to start off with a 6,000 square foot mural. <laughs> Doesn't sound like you had a lot of support and you also had to edit a lot of your artistic approach. I commend you. Um, I guess my question would be, and so far as your experience here and working you know, within the street art community of Toronto, with street art community with street art toronto as the organization have you felt like you've received more support in execution of oops, the projects that uh you've been involved with um i can say yes because uh the difference is in uh what i saw here in toronto um I compare with Iran, everything in Iran uh, runs by government. Uh, but yeah, this is the only um, support. And sometimes you have to deal with their idea, uh, what they want to um, want you. There are some expectation. Um, I am happy here. There is uh, there is not 
uh, such rules to Got follow. It. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I certainly commend you for completing that project. And I'm so happy that you're here in Toronto. And I can't wait to see more of your work. And hopefully one day you'll have a 6,000 square foot panel <laughs> here. You know, let's aim, let's aim high for sure. Yeah. Thank you, Alika. I'm going to move on to our second last panel uh, member. His name is Jeff Blackburn. He's a multidisciplinary artist who's inspired by both sequential art as well as the graffiti and post graffiti movements. Jeff, I know you're a sucker for line work with the discipline for detail that most of us envy. Can you tell us how you've learned to adapt different techniques uh, and materials to suit your work in the public environment? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, most of my work when I started was, uh, was illustrative, um, kind of very line heavy type work. Uh, what you're seeing right now is a poster design I did a few years back for the Polaris uh, Music Prize for A Tribe Called Red, where Q was actually uh, the grass dancing model that I used um, for this design, as I think he was a touring kind of dancer with them at the time. Um, But yeah, so right off the hop, I kind of, uh, I think Carolyn's sharing, sharing an image right now. Um, but yeah, I came up uh, kind of with graffiti artists as my role models with mural type work. Um, so all I kind of knew was spray paint and, you know, watching guys uh, graph guys do spray painting. There was people I looked up to to try and figure out how to integrate um, the really line-based work that I was doing. And um, there was the DMV crew out of France who were artists like Dran, uh, Bomke, Greece, who did a lot of outline type work and kind of like the black work that you're seeing now, uh, they would integrate lines like that. Um, into their kind of graph pieces and, and their big murals. Um, so I tried using kind of hex caps and very specialty kind of mosquito type caps and making my own to try and get these super fine lines. Uh, but there was always spitting, there was always a bit of mess and it was never kind of as clean as I wanted it. And uh, so I was fortunate early on to, uh, hear that an artist, a California-based artist called Andrew Schultz was painting mural here in Toronto in the West End around 2012, 2013. Um, and just as a fan, I went down to uh, check it out. And I guess one of the producers was a gallerist that I knew um, who had brought him to town. And, uh, and they needed an assistant. So I ended up jumping on for about a week and, uh, and assisting him. And he did this entire massive like building wrap using fluid acrylics and like a one inch brush. And I didn't know you could use the, those media um, or that medium outside. I didn't, didn't know it was color fast. I didn't know it was weatherproof. Um, and so all of a sudden I was able to integrate the acrylics uh, along with the spray paint um, in order to kind of layer the work and get it to look like uh, the illustrations I was doing and the paintings I was doing in the gallery. Um, and yeah, so like the print that you're seeing now, there's, there's just no way I would be able to kind of do that with spray paint and all the detail would kind of get lost. And even with brushwork, I mean, that's a digital piece through and through, <laughs> at least half of it. Um, but I found that it's all kind of about using whatever medium you're, you are and integrating it uh, with whatever your style is and how you filter your particular style 
um, to whatever surface you're working on. Um, and, and yeah, whatever the project is really asking of you. Uh, so to take this kind of one step further, uh, that stuff was kind of earlier on and we were talking about mentorship and that sort of thing. And so, yeah, most recently last fall, I was able to work on this 12 story building with, uh, with Birdo, uh, another great, great artist here from Toronto, uh, or Saskatchewan originally based out of Toronto. Um, and so this sort of thing as well was, you know, how do we build the texture of like the deer, let's say, how do we, how do we grid out this project? Like, how do we, without using projectors, without using anything, like, how are we going to make this a reality? Um, so I think, you know, any of these mentorship kind of opportunities are incredibly important. Um, and, you know, again, like, Bacon and Q were both saying like the, uh, the knowledge exchange aspect of it is massive. Um, I'd like to thank, I helped Alberto on a few technical aspects and he definitely helped me out with just seeing something like this as possible. That's, <laughs> that's great. Sorry, I didn't know if I was muted or not. Um, oh. So Jeff, over the years, I, I mean, I had the privilege of being nearby when you had the first can, well, it might not have been the first can, but when you did, might have done your first piece outside. Yeah, I, only because of you. I, I wanted no part of that. <laughs> <laughs> and what was amazing is that there was a mentorship built into, even though it was you know, not part of a program as, as Bacon and Q and everybody here has kind of mentioned working on the street, there is this critical piece of mentorship that just organically happens. Thanks. And, um, and in that case, you were mentored by another um, graffiti artist. And, and yeah. you know what, that piece on that wall was definitely one of my faves you know okay all right thanks um yeah i mean that the whole reason that that came about was you had been curating this group show with artists like omen and sight and elixir and soy and fresh uh uh labrona and i i think that might have been it but it was all these graffiti based artists that i just i loved and i fanned out on so it was all these graffiti AKAs and then Jeff Blackburn on the flyer. Um, and so it culminated and ended uh, the night of Nuit Blanche. So we were doing a big alley kind of live painting through the night type situation. And um, yeah, I mean, Omen was sweet enough. I'd never really used a spray paint aside from, you know, being 13 and having no idea what was going on or being 12. And getting into trouble but um omen gave me like you know a 10 minute tutorial literally like on his way out of town like heading back to montreal um just different caps and quick run rundown of things and then uh while we were there site was just amazing watching him work he was just like a human printer every little space he just came and filled up everything style different styles different shapes different no sketches just freehanded everything um and yeah it's seeing something done just makes it possible um because it's graffiti and murals were always just magic to me and they still are uh especially guys that can just wield a can of spray paint like i yeah it's it's just incredible uh to me and magic so seeing it in person yeah is, is a game changer for sure yeah, I love that. From alleys to monumental buildings in Toronto with the support of Street Art Toronto. Love, love to see that. Um, on the notion of community support, I'm going to move within that theme to our last speaker for the day, Margaret Cresswell, 
who's been a long time uh, producer of fine murals and paintings. Margaret, over the years, um, you have been a source of positivity within community engagement sessions uh, for public art projects. And frequently I've seen you lift other artists up, which is so very appreciated. Um, could you tell me how community engagement fits within your public art practice and process? Thanks for the opportunity to be here. I unmuted myself. <laughs> and uh, I really do appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak and share a little bit about what my process is. Um, I, when I started, usually the environment is what uh, relates to my process. I usually do, um, when I see the wall or the box or the, the, the pillar or whatever I'm painting relates directly to the environment that's around it. So if I'm painting out in Scarborough where I grew up, I'm painting the nature of the ravines out there and the parklands um, and some of my boxes reflect that. Um, and when I do the traffic boxes for the city, um, I look at where the location that it's given and I'd like to take that as a jumping off point. And I spend time at the location before I ever paint the box to see what's happening um, in that location. And, and I'll just speak to one really quickly. Um, one of the boxes that I did was at a location um, in where I live now, where a little girl unfortunately lost her life at the corner. Um, and the box that is that I paint ended up painting there is a tribute to her um, as the community went around and put pink ribbons on everything after she lost her life at the corner. And so the box is now a, a giant pink ribbon. So uh, that community uh, really appreciated the fact that, that there's a permanent monument to the little girl there now. So um, that speaks directly to you know, the community and, and where you're working. And that's what I like to do. So when I did a box at the Brickworks, I did bricks because, you know, I kind of thought that's, that goes without saying you do bricks. But at the same time, I also thought I was creating a canvas for possibly other people to graffiti on top of because it was, um, you know, a, a faux, a trompe l'oeil of bricks. So uh, fortunately, it, or unfortunately, however you take it, it hasn't actually ever been tagged. So <laughs> that's unfortunate for that. But uh, it was an, it was a social experiment to see if it, it was accepted as, because my background is in traditional painting, um, it was a, a sort of a social experiment on my end to see how my work was accepted within the public realm. So um, that's um, that sort of worked out really great. And another box that I worked on um, and the community engagement that came from that was um, the influence you can have on people just walking by. And one day I had a little guy come by on his way home from school and he was like, you're painting, you're painting that. And I said, yeah. And he said, are you an artist? I said, yeah, I'm an artist. But he said it as a statement. It wasn't a question. A lot of time you get it as a question. Are you an artist? It's like, yeah, I'm actually allowed to do this. <laughs> the city hired me to paint the box. And uh, so he was like, no, you're an artist. And so he wanted to talk to me a lot about art and how I could, how he could end up being an artist and paint in the public realm. And so a lot of the, um, a lot of my talk that day was spent talking to this, this young gentleman on his way home from school. And um, the one thing that I'll always take from that is as he was turning to go um, from talking to me, he, uh, he said, uh, he said, you know, um, did you ever, he said, my, my, my mom and dad always, um, Ask me if I have a plan B. They, they asked my brother, uh, they never asked my brother because he plans to be a doctor, but you know, for, for him, his parents always ask if he has a plan B because he wants to be an artist. <laughs> so I told him, no, there's never been a plan B. So that kind of engagement within the community while you're working, it, you, I'll just carry that forever. Oh, I love that. So how did you start taking your, you know, your fine art practice, um, into the public realm and within Street Art Toronto projects? Well, I actually, uh, I love watching paint dry. So I'm a slow <laughs> painter and I love the, the concept of mixing the paint. So I work with a brush and two paints and uh, our artist quality paints. And I love that aspect of it. It's a lot, uh, there's a lot of, um, adjusting to an outdoor environment and in the public realm and, and you work a lot slower but I like that process for me that's that's why I paint so 
Um, it's a little different. You have to kind of think in, the, in a big picture kind of way. And sometimes you can't spend all day painting one little tree. <laughs> you have to spend, you know, a, a lot of your time finishing the whole thing. So translating your work from canvas to concrete or metal, you have to get, have some give and take of your artistic um, idea to start with. And you have to translate it into the surface you're working on. So it's always, so it's always a challenge, but there's always a, an answer. Do you have a favorite project uh, you've done over the years? All, all of them are my favorite. Um, the, la the, one, the, the one I did last year at Carrot Commons where I did the pillars uh, that went directly where our comment on their, um, their community garden and I did the pollinators. So I did uh, the life cycle of different pollinators that visit the gardens. And it was pr also part of an educational for uh, kids in the area and people to learn the life cycle of bees and and hummingbirds and all and so i illustrated that on the pillars there so and it leads up to their community garden so that that was my favorite one from last year <laughs> i love it um i think at this point what i'd like to do is open it up to the panel to see if any of you might have uh, questions for each other and we'll do that for you know the next few minutes does anyone have questions for each other i was just going to say uh that leland can talk directly to community engagement he does a lot of that with his murals directly especially your i think your big one leland great you have to unmute yourself <laughs> classic uh yeah, I'd say uh, community engagement is definitely uh, an important part of my process. Uh, it pretty much informs all of my projects, really, because I feel that oftentimes when we create murals, uh, we, we think of the community second or last to the project. We're like, oh, we'll do, I'll do what I do. I'll paint my flowers or I'll paint my landscape and, and they'll love it. But what I feel that's really important for a really successful community-based project is to actually ask them what they want be like what like because they are the ones who live with it they have to see it every day um they have to interact with it it's it's their home and so i find that it's really or i i think it's really important to ask them what they want and to give them that and to try to give them different like uh different options so you're not just forcing your thing on them because i don't know it's just and and also it's just wonderful when you can take your art and really add some substance to a community like i've done some work in some pretty like rough neighborhoods, neighborhoods that I, I've grown up with and neighborhoods that I, I would never go to as a kid. But the thing that's really cool is that when you go to those communities and you talk to them and you hear their stories and you paint the pictures that they wanna see, the like impact that it has on, on those communities is just like incredible. Like one of the ones like, I, I tell you, I, I would be scared to go to this place at night, but at the end of the mural, all of the, like a lot of the residents of this building came through in their best clothes and they, they showed up and were like, that's, that's my idea. That's my dog on that wall. That's this and that. And, and you can really see that it, it allows people to take ownership of their communities and of their neighborhoods. And that's what I think is really important about community engagement is giving them, giving them the, the tools to get that power back. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. And I, I think as we move towards uh, the year of public art in 2021, it will be an interesting challenge to make sure we avoid, um, I had a teacher that called it plop and drop, that sometimes the public art movement tends to do, like here's this amazing sculpture mural, but there's no engagement. So hopefully, you know, with the support systems in place, um, we'll be able to maintain that authentic connection to the community and also create these wonderful art pieces for next year and for years to come. Um, does anyone else have a question for each other? Karen, unmute yourself, please. There. Uh, I have a question for Bacon, which um, I'm sure I would have asked him privately, but I think other people might know so, uh, or be interested. What did you do or how did it happen that you took the leap from creating uh, public art and murals in Toronto locally to international projects? How did that go happen for you? Well, that's a good question. Um, 
I think uh, traveling is key. Um, you travel and um, I mean, being a graffiti artist has its advantages in that sense that um, you put yourself out there to begin with. Um, I, it's been kind of like a gradual transition to it. So it's not like, you know, one, one day I was just getting a phone call to go here and there and there and to paint. Um, but it starts off by you, you start getting recognized for your work. And then there's mural events that occur and then people invite you out to them. Um, a lot of my traveling is always based on painting. So I would say anybody interested in going on the international level, find out where there's mural festivals, apply for them and um, just go for it from there. Um, I think, uh, it's not like one of those things that you look at me and you see my work all over the world. It just didn't happen overnight like that. It was like a really slow kind of uh, gradual uh, step that was made. And, uh, and then people, Instagram is amazing, you know, because I, I find I get a lot of my commissions off of Instagram. Like people don't even know where you live on Instagram. Right. So they just see your work and they're like, Hey, you know, can I get a mural from you? And, uh, you know, they're in wherever. So, um, but I would encourage anybody that wants to be international to travel and just show your work to some people and you'll get a wall and just paint and, uh, you know, look out for those international, like, um, you know, mural and graffiti festivals and apply and just enjoy traveling and painting when you travel and before you know it your work's going to be all over the world so that that's my tip for that <laughs> thanks bacon you're uh, welcome question for q and uh bacon might either of you have a question um for the six um either any of the six artists Q, do you want to start or? Uh, I'll let you go first. <laughs> um, yeah, I got I got questions uh, definitely. Um, I I always uh, you know I I'd like to ask um, maybe you know um, Malika, you know what what kind of challenges uh, she feels like she faces when she's doing the murals. To, uh, you know, here, uh, and especially being from abroad, and, and um, you know, what, what does uh, she think uh, of uh, working here in Toronto with all the artists and stuff? Um, uh, maybe first challenge is, uh, I can say is language barrier, uh, but uh, I think I'm getting better <laughs> through the years. Uh, but um, something else I can say is uh, I'm trying to find my style um, to uh, maybe um, 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 audience can uh, relate more because somehow I got my inspiration uh, from my illustration and then uh, my illustration and take inspiration from from Iranian painting, um, but maybe I'm trying to um, uh, slowly um, change my style to maybe um, international audience can um, relate to uh, this style better. I think your style is great and uh, <laughs> I wouldn't think about it too much. I think style just kind of goes on its own and eventually one day you look at your old work and then another day you look at your new stuff and it's completely different. So I just say, say just keep doing what you're doing. Okay, thank you. <laughs> uh, my question is uh, for Jeff. Uh, when we was working back in the day in uh, Billabong, for that summer. Did you ever think that we would be here today? Or did you anticipate even having a career in art back then? No, the, the funny thing is like, I was 
during that summer and during that time, I was, uh, I was going to school at York for fine arts, for like studio arts, drawing, painting, and photography. Uh, but even after graduating, I never thought uh, professional art, like a professional creative was really a thing. Uh, you were actually one of the first guys I ever met who, I remember you were like, you were touring while break dancing. Uh, you had a new era of sponsorship. I remember you had this crazy suitcase for your hats. <laughs> you could just wheel around as carry on. It was the craziest thing to me. I couldn't understand how that was possible. Um, and then cut to a couple of years later, like I was working at the Drake Hotel, which is where I met Anne Marie and, uh, you know, doing little art shows and that sort of thing. And I started meeting a bunch of DJs there. And I was like, oh, these are, again, like just my peers and my people, but they're, they've got their weekly gigs, like here or there, like you can, you can make a living in the arts and it's possible. And, and then that building ended up being full of like musicians and actors and, and, and people that, you know, had crazy, different trajectories all over the place but no I I still don't understand how I'm making a living <laughs> like I don't it's still yeah it kind of trips me out um, that we're able to yeah make a living and make a life for ourselves like being creative like it's a pretty phenomenal thing absolutely absolutely yeah it's definitely really special um we have time for one more question and then I think we're gonna wrap it up. Anybody? Are we good? Well, thank you everybody. And I'm gonna pass the mic over to Carolyn. Thank you so much, Anne-Marie. And thank you all the panelists. That was so interesting, incredibly stimulating. I learned new things that I didn't even know about each of you, which were really fascinating. and. Uh, I have to say, and I think this is true for all of us at Street Art Toronto, every time we have an opportunity to take a breath and to have conversations with you and really hear more about the myriad of things that you, you do and have done, uh, it gives us wonderful new ideas for ways to continue to evolve uh, street mural and graffiti art and the practice of that and the celebration of that and the sharing of that uh, in Toronto and around the world. So thank you. Um, please, everyone who's tuned in for this, do check out all the great art available in the Toronto Outdoor Art Fair in 2020. And especially, of course, the artists that you've heard here today, some of whose art is featured in a nested Street Art Toronto exhibit online. Uh, others have their own exhibit space online. And now I'll turn it over to my colleague, Catherine, to take us home. Thank you, Catherine. Carolyn. Thank, thank you, Carolyn. Uh, I'd also like to thank everybody uh, on the panel uh, and Anne-Marie for co-curating. Uh, I'd also like to give a shout out to the rest of our team that uh, isn't here today, but is here in spirit. Uh, Jason Campbell and Michael Hutchison uh, and our manager, Randy McLean. And a special shout out to our colleague Jody Callen, who is a co-founder of Street Art Toronto. Uh, so wanted to uh, uh, just a big shout out to Jody. Uh, and to learn more about Start, uh, please check out our website at Toronto.ca/streetart, all one word, and our map at StreetArtToronto.ca. And uh, I just can't wait to see what's next for all of the artists that are on the panel and thank you.